So we're now going to solve an example using the Miller effect. So originally we had an amplifier that had an input voltage source V sub S with some source resistance. We biased the gate of the device through a resistance RG. The drain of the device was biased through resistance RD and we took the output from that drain. And we had three capacitors, CGD, CGS, and CBB. So what we're going to do is replace CGD with its equivalent circuit. So if you recall, we short our voltage sources Here we have two capacitors at the input now. We have the original CGS, and we have a capacitor that's equal to 1 plus AV, the voltage gain of our transistor, times CGD. At the output, we have a resistor RD going to the drain. We have a capacitor, our original capacitor, CDB, C drain to bulk. And we have another capacitor that's equal to 1 plus 1 over AV times C. GD. And let's not forget the internal to the, to the device there's a resistance R sub 0. So without going into too much detail, we can calculate the gain of this transistor as being equal to minus RG divided by RS plus RG, that's due to a voltage division at the input, times G sub M for the transistor times RD in parallel with R sub zero. Note that the important thing here is that this is an inverting transistor. So AV is equal to minus this whole quantity. Because of that minus sign, we can use the Miller effect. Uh, so another way to put this is that for single transistor amplifiers, the Miller effect only occurs for common emitter or common source transistors. Now we have two, uh, two capacitors that we have to solve for effectively because we can put CGS in parallel with 1 plus AV times CGD, and we can put CDB in parallel with 1 plus 1 over AV times CGD. So we only have two time constants we have to solve for when we do the Miller effect. So our first time constant, tau sub 1, is equal to C total at the first node, at the input node, which is equal to CGS plus 1 plus AV times CGD. And our R total is just equal to the parallel combination of RG and RS. So our time constant is at uh, node 1 is equal to C total at node 1 times R total at node 1. Our time constant at node 2, we have C total at node 2 is equal to CDB plus 1 plus 1 over AV times CGD. And R total at node 2 
is equal to rd and parallel with r sub 0. Therefore, our time constant is the product of those two. And if we were trying to find our pole frequency, omega h would be equal to 1 divided by the sum of tau 1 plus tau 2. So that was much easier than finding the time constant when we didn't use the Miller effect.